RWAs or real world assets could be the next big narrative in crypto, specifically around DeFi. In fact, some people are predicting that it could become a trillion dollar crypto use case over the next decade. But is this something that can really happen or is it just some pie in the sky? Hi everyone and welcome back to the Virtual Bacon channel where I teach you how to build wealth with crypto. When it comes to the crypto markets, the narrative is everything. If you can spot the new narrative trends early, you don't even need to pick out the best projects as the whole sector will do well with the hype. And over the years, Years, we've seen crypto narratives like DeFi, gaming, and layer ones, and countless others. As you probably noticed, over time, many of these narratives die down when they fail to attract real users for the long term. Since many of you guys have asked for more narrative style videos, I decided to cover this next narrative that I've been seeing in the insider circles, and that is with real world assets or RWAs. Real world asset platforms are revolutionizing crypto by bridging the gap between DeFi and TradFi. And today we'll discuss what the RWAs WA narrative is, some of the biggest projects that could benefit from this hype, the challenges RWAs will face, and then I'll give you my opinion on whether this narrative can survive for the long term. Let's start with the basics of the RWA crypto narrative. RWAs refer to the tokenization of real world assets like gold, real estate, and other intangible assets like bonds or carbon credits. And if you look at the way things are today, the only way you can buy these assets are through centralized entities like a brokerage. For example, if you want to buy gold, you'd go to a brokerage like Vanguard and buy shares of gold. You never physically even hold the gold, but you still get exposure to its price. The problem with this is that brokerages are the only people licensed to offer these shares, so they're the ones who make money off of their trading fees. And if we think about it, this would be a great use case for crypto and DeFi because wherever centralization is a problem, blockchains can potentially be the answer. With RWA platforms, DeFi users like you and me can buy and lend these shares that are backed by real traditional assets. And so of course, DeFi users are the ones who earn the yield, not the brokerages. Both of these elements combined makes tokenized RWA assets more flexible and profitable. For the crypto native DGENs, this could also be a game changer because current DeFi yields are unpredictable with rates fluctuating based on market activity and sentiment. I mean, think of the stablecoin liquidity pools that offered nearly 100% yield in the bull market, but only to plunge to the single digits in the bear market. If DeFi really wants to compete with TradFi, the yield income can't be purely based on hype and volatility. With the introduction of RWAs, this brings real stable yields, and this means DeFi can thrive even during bear market downturns. I think this will be a crucial link for the long-term functionality and sustainable yield generation, which will then instill more long-term trust from investors in DeFi. To understand the full extent of the potential impact of RWAs, think about this. The traditional financial system has over $600 trillion worth of assets. And if DeFi can capture even just one percent of this market, it would be massive for the crypto space as that would be six trillion dollars. In comparison, the total market cap of the entire crypto space today sits at only 1.3 trillion. Let that sink in. By the way, if you're enjoying this narrative style video, let me know in the comments which narrative you want me to cover next. Moving on, let's look at some of the recent developments in the RWA sector. When it comes to RWA use cases, tokenized gold is the one that's easiest to understand. Even though Bitcoin is often seen as the digital gold, it's just too volatile to attract the same type of investors. I mean, let's be real. Most crypto investors today don't want to buy gold because it's just kind of boring. And current gold investors don't want to buy crypto or Bitcoin because they think it's too risky. But now we're starting to see a rise in tokenized gold, which falls somewhere in the middle. Tokenized gold has exploded over the years and just surpassed $1 billion in market cap for the first time ever. The two biggest tokenized gold issuers today are Pax Gold and Tether. This is a great way to get exposure for gold because they don't have the same management fees you would see with a gold ETF. The Boston Consulting Group predicts that the tokenized asset market could reach $16 trillion by 2030. And I wouldn't be surprised if tokenized gold captured a large part of that market share. Another TradFi player making big moves for RWAs is none other than S&P Global, the same company behind the S&P 500 index. They have just announced that they are hiring for a DeFi director to explore bridging their equities markets with DeFi. This happened only days after the Nasdaq announced their plans to offer crypto custody and trading solutions. So I think it's pretty clear that the biggest companies in traditional finance are determined to explore 
explore crypto and DeFi in particular. We also saw Goldman Sachs launch their very own digital assets platform back in January. And while this is a private blockchain for Goldman Sachs customers, this does show how Goldman values blockchain tech and the ability to tokenize assets. In 2020, the Goldman digital assets team consisted of only four people, but now in 2023, the number is reportedly over 70, which further supports the idea of RWAs being around for a long time. But perhaps one of the biggest RWA advancements came when it was reported that Amazon is launching their very own NFT platform and they could be tying their NFTs to physical products sold on Amazon. Early reports are suggesting that these NFTs could come as early as May of this year, but nothing has been confirmed by Amazon just yet. I'll say this isn't very surprising though, because Amazon has shown a lot of interest in the crypto space over the past few years, specifically around NFTs. From the crypto native crowd, we also saw the research team at Binance publish a 30-page report on RWAs. This is highly uncharacteristic of Binance. They actually actually mentioned a large list of altcoin projects that they are bullish on in the RWA space. Binance doesn't usually show a lot of altcoin projects, so this is definitely something to keep an eye on. It looks to me that they are serious about pushing this narrative. If you're interested in reading the report, I'll have it linked down in the description below. But while RWAs are the next big narrative, it wouldn't make much sense for the market to be dominated by centralized entities. So let's look at some of the top crypto projects incorporating RWAs today. The first and most popular project using RWAs is MakerDAO. MakerDAO is the OG DeFi protocol behind the DAI stablecoin, and they've recently started getting into real world assets to diversify the collateral backing of DAI. Currently, MakerDAO has about $680 million in RWAs on their platform and it contributes to about 60% of their total revenue. Aave, the leading DeFi lending protocol, is also working on a RWA lending market. Both of these DeFi giants are venturing into the RWA space with the help of this next project on our list, which is Centrifuge CFG. The Centrifuge DeFi project enables companies to mint on-chain credit lines based on their RWAs, such as real estate, invoices, and more. These tokenized credit can then be used as collateral for borrowing crypto loans, which unlocks new opportunities for both borrowers and lenders. DeFi protocols and institutions can participate in lending by using these on-chain credit as collateral, which expands their reach beyond traditional digital assets. So far, Centrifuge has already originated over $300 million in loans. Third on our list, we have Goldfinch. Goldfinch is an innovative DeFi project that aims to provide under-collateralized loans to businesses in emerging markets, such as in Africa, Southeast Asia, and Latin America. Goldfinch has already established a consistent revenue stream that's not tied to the performance of the overall crypto market. And this shows just how important RWA is and how they can potentially lead to less volatility. With over $100 million in active loans, Goldfinch is already making a significant impact by addressing the credit needs of companies in these undeserved regions. Aside from business loans from untapped regions, Goldfinch also lets users invest in emerging market sectors such as carbon reduction fintech and ESCG focused investing. The next RWA project we have is TruFi. TruFi is an uncollateralized lending platform that lets portfolio managers run their own funds and anyone can lend money to them with USDC. Founded by the same team as the True USD stablecoin, they have already originated $1.7 billion in loans and have paid out $40 million in interest to protocol users. You can lend out USDC to all types of funds for things like fintech and real estate, with some funds generating 7% per year in real yield. Next up, we have Maple Finance. Maple is another uncollateralized lending platform just like TruFi, except that Maple Finance is focused on institutional traders and firms as the borrowers. One of the major risks with undercollateralized lending is bad debt and defaults. So when the market has a really bad downturn, the institutional traders might lose the money you lent them. We actually saw this happen in real time during the FTX collapse. Crypto trading firm Auros ended up owing $18 million to lend on Maple Finance, while another firm called Orthogonal Trading has yet to repay their bad debt that is still on the hook 
for $31 million. Okay, three more RWA projects to cover. Next up, we have Swarm Markets. Swarm Markets is focusing on tokenizing traditional financial assets like popular stocks and have already brought Tesla and Apple stock on chain on the Polygon network. These tokens track the exact same performance as the underlying stock shares, but these tokens are tradable 24 seven, even when the stock markets are closed. Swarm is also unlike purely synthetic DeFi stocks as they are officially regulated in Germany. Next up, we have Ondo Finance. Ondo Finance looks like the most legitimate institutional grade yield platform on this list. You can deposit again USDC to get all kinds of traditional yields, such as US treasuries, short-term bonds, even high yield corporate bonds. BlackRock is the official manager behind these funds and they have top-notch custodians like Coinbase and ClearStreet. The yield instruments and risk levels on Ondo Finance are also rated by established firms like the S&P. Okay, now for the final project on our list, we have RealT. RealT lets investors purchase fractional ownership of real estates across the US. Each property is split into unique tokens. These tokens represent shares in the property, which enables investors to benefit from rental income and potential capital appreciation. This tokenized real estate approach allows for seamless investments regardless of an investor's physical location or amount of capital. Okay, last bit of disclaimer, while these RWA projects are showing signs of growth right now, you should know how we do it on the Virtual Bacon channel. We also need to look at the main challenges facing the entire RWA space. The first and potentially biggest challenge of RWAs is that they aren't really all that decentralized right now. Uncollateralized loans rely on centralized parties for underwriting and determining the credit. This makes sense in the TradFi market because without someone determining who is likely to be able to pay back their debt, risky borrowers have a higher chance of defaulting on their loans. However, as the crypto credit parties are still in their infancy, we can't really put the same level of trust in them as with TradFi credit agencies. We're also seeing a heavy reliance on USDC in most of these RWA protocols. And USDC is completely centrally owned by Circle and Coinbase. As we have all seen in the crypto space in this bear market, when things really go south, no project is safe if it has a centralized kill switch. Centralization effectively makes the crypto RWA platforms today very similar to fintech apps. They all rely on central counterparties, central stablecoins, and central custodians. Although the business logic of RWAs happen on chain, you don't have real control over your funds if a third party decides to cheat the system. Assets can also be seized if regulation changes, but this will never happen with pure DeFi platforms. Another big hurdle RWAs face is regulatory conditions. With the current climate and regulatory framework for crypto and RWAs, nobody really knows what they are allowed to do. So this makes it hard to invest in a RWA project long term if regulators can come in and ruin the party in just a few years. Americans are already facing restrictions due to security laws and KYC procedures, with the SEC chairman Gary Gensler seemingly waging war on crypto. These tokenized assets targeting US markets will have a hard time onboarding US investors if they want to stay compliant with the SEC. The last challenge that RWA crypto platforms face is having bad debt in a market downturn. With DeFi native lending platforms that use Bitcoin, Ethereum, or other other cryptos as collateral, the liquidations can happen automatically on chain when prices move. Fast liquidations are super important because they help mitigate losses during market downturns and prevent more damages to lenders. But with RWAs, you can't instantly liquidate these assets. This makes RWA loans incredibly risky as they can keep losing in value and potentially default if the custodian do not act quickly. While it's not hard to see the future potential of token tokenized RWAs, we still need to take a step back and look at the very real challenges this sector could face today. It's hard to deny that real world asset lending is showing promising signs of growth in the DeFi space, but I personally am not expecting mass adoption in the short term. While the narrative seems promising, the centralized market mechanics are still too complex to just happen overnight. And also for the reasons I mentioned above, RWAs are nothing like the typical DeFi Ponzi's that can gain massive traction within 
just a few months' time. RWAs require real stringent regulation and management, and this takes time to establish. For the long term, however, there are quite a few bullish factors that makes RWAs sustainable. The first is that RWA adoption is happening slowly but surely. Whether it's centralized or decentralized parties, RWAs are being integrated in both TradFi institutions and the DeFi open markets. This demonstrates the real demand no matter which side of the crypto spectrum you sit. Major crypto players like Binance, Maker, and Aave have already embraced RWAs, while TradFi giants like S&P, Nasdaq, and Goldman are trying to claim their shares of DeFi. With only a few established protocols in the space and the high barrier to entry for new platforms, these few RWA platforms that we have mentioned should have their TVLs undoubtedly increase over the long term as the demand rises. Another perspective to consider for RWAs is how they can bring real sustainable yield to DeFi. While some investors embrace the fast-moving Ponzi markets of crypto, there are also other participants who view volatility as a big turnoff. When DeFi can offer both the volatile yields in hyped-up markets and sustainable TradFi yields in quiet markets, markets, then these DeFi platforms can really survive in whichever market conditions for the long term. The last bullish factor for RWAs is that they are presenting a new use case for crypto that is easy to understand. I'm sure by now you've heard people time and time again question if crypto and blockchain can really be used for anything other than speculation. RWAs and asset tokenization is another answer to this puzzle, and I wouldn't be surprised if it became one of crypto's killer use cases in the long term. Here's one thing you should take away from this video. RWA tokenization and integration with DeFi is a promising development in the crypto space, and it could be the killer use case everyone has been waiting for. While this mixed sector of traditional finance may face regulatory challenges and slower development in the short term, its potential for long-term sustainable adoption is very significant. Traditional institutions will want to claim their share of the DeFi market through RWAs, and crypto natives will want to capture the sustainable yield of RWA assets. This is why RWAs is one of the big crypto narratives that I'll be keeping my eye on, and I think its use case is here to stay. Okay, that's it for today's video. If you like this content but want it sooner, join my free newsletter on virtualbacon.com with over 12,000 friendly readers. Every week, I write about the latest market events, hottest narratives, and my personal investing insights, and my newsletter subscribers get to read about these topics first. Remember to like and share this video if you found it helpful. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.